May 5th, 1990, Sheffield United travelled to Leicester City with a clear and focused motivation. Win this game of football and win promotion back to the top flight of English football for the first time in almost 15 years. What followed was a day that still lived on in Blades folklore and legend. A day that will be passed down from generation to generation. And of course, as the goals went in, it was just, you know, you were in ecstasy. Brian Dean's goal, I can still put it down as one of my favourite goals of all time. What a scrappy, bobbly bear. Four chat, four goals in one, four jumps in one. Everything about him. Then at the end of the match, carrying, carrying uh, Bassett off on his shoulders, and he was, he was stripped down basically. I think he'd only got his pants left on. I think Rob. Gary Sinclair. I think Kev. I was at Filbert Street. I were at Filbert Street. I was there at Filbert Street. That day at Filbert Street. I'm Gary Sinclair, stadium announcer at Sheffield United Football Club. And yes, I was there at Filbert Street. So uh, thanks to uh, the Shore and View for inviting me to share a few memories. And uh, as Johnny says, what, what do we remember of the day? What? <laughs> Not a lot, actually. Uh, what impact did it have? But, uh, and how good was it? Now, I always judge great occasions in the history of Sheffield United with how good the pitch invasion was. So my first pitch invasion was uh, when we played Watford and we won 3-0 that glorious promotion season. And uh, that was my first, first ever pitch invasion. And then of course, uh, the infamous Darlington, which, uh, I, I don't mind admitting, to this day, the greatest day of my life as a blade. For those who were there, they'll know what I'm talking about. It was just different gravy. And then the next pitch invasion, um, Leicester. So there was a lot riding on that match. You know, we had to win it, went behind. We first of all got to the ground. Uh, I think we were absolutely rat -horsed. <laughs> We We got in the uh, side terrace, the side area, not behind the goal, unfortunately. But it was dead easy for getting on the pitch. Yeah, uh, everything about it, yellow shirts, everybody in fancy dress. Every time we scored a goal, everybody just fell onto the pitch in, in all this fancy dress. There were people with dressed as monks and all sorts of lovely things just rolling around on the floor. It was amazing, and I think the biggest memory really was we we we, uh, we went to Blackburn a few days before that, and we only we only drew. If we'd have won that night, we'd have been promoted. Filbert Street, what made it so special? Everything, nerves with you. We expected United to do a United to fall apart last minute. You know, Newcastle were playing at Borough, I think. Everything we're up in, it were. Everything were up in air, really. Uh, getting the crush. We were behind net and we were spending in corners. And crush were, were, were incredible. And even a big bloke like me, my feet hardly touched floor. The game itself got off to the worst possible start for Bassett's Blades. Mills scored for the home side, putting Leicester one up. And he started to think, oh God, we've done it again. This typical blades. Go a goal behind you thinking, oh shit, here we go again. It's going to fall apart again. But Paul Wood soon set things back level, and what followed was simply sensational. Brian Dean put the blades ahead, and more than that, 10,000 travelling blades, men and women, who'd taken over more than half of the stadium, were in raptures. Further goals from Tony Agana, Wilf Rostron, celebrated by a true yellow wall of blades sporting the iconic away shirt, meant Sheffield United had done it. On a day that saw Cross City rivals Sheffield Wednesday relegated, Filbert Street became the home of one of the biggest parties in football. Dino scored a goal that 
rebounded about six times and crowd go yeah no yeah and it was just a, it's so that will always live there and then of course it ended match when we got uh, news that Wednesday had uh, lost it and got relegated it just the the, the, the whole thing they could have you could have scripted it any better than it were as the goals went in it was just you know you were in ecstasy I mean, I, I, I don't think for one minute I had a mobile phone there that day. I don't think it was, that we did. Uh, but um, it was just so magnificent, the atmosphere, the songs, and the squad at the time, Harry Bassett, knocked together, you know, the Bobby Bookers, the Will Frostroms, uh, Digger Barnes, and of course, our leader, uh, Mr. Wilder, uh, playing his part, it was just so uh, meteoric rise, so unexpected, but the football was fantastic. Dino, Tony Agana, uh, Jock, all these people have become fabulous friends over the years, uh, and I've been very privileged to, to call them friends. So that day was very, very special. I wasn't the stadium announcer at the time, that, that came uh, a couple of years later uh, but at the time I was the resident DJ at the Blue Bell in Hackenthorpe which at the time was run by Kath and Nev Bradshaw parents of legendary Bradders and so I was due to be working there that night and of course after the celebrations and much pitch invasions and the even better news that filtered through to Filbert Street that uh, the unmentionables had gone down. It was just the ultimate, the ultimate Sheffield double. And for that reason alone, the Leicester match stands in its own right. It was the ultimate double. May the 5th, remember it well, never forget. And so it, it, <laughs> it led back to uh, the car park scenes where Harry, Dave Bassett, almost got uh, every stitch of clothing ripped off him as he come out of the coach. The scenes were just absolutely wild. Brian Dean's goal, I still put it down as one of my favourite goals of all time. What a strappy, bobbly bat. Four chat, four goals in one, four jumps in one. Superb. Fabulous. I mean, they were laughing when they when they went down and all. It was just like the perfect day, wasn't it? If Carlsberg did match days, that were match day, weren't it? And uh, coming by, I mean, we made the mistake. We went into town. We didn't go on to London Road, so we ended up spending rest at night with miserable Wednesday fans, and uh, and it was eventful. <laughs> <laughs> but once we once we gone in front, and uh, then we went three one in front, and uh, it, it, we knew then, but I think they, did they get one back just before half time or something? But I think we were four, we were four, four one up, and they got one back before half time. And you thought, uh oh, <laughs> still not all. And uh, it'll be typical Blades to, but we, we, we totally battered them really. There were no uh, result were never in doubt once we'd gone in from, and it, just the seams and everything about it. Then at end of match, carrying carrying uh, Bassett off on his shoulders. And he was, he was stripped down basically. I think he'd only got his pants left on by the time he got to the dressing room. So, but it, it, it gets, you can't you can't explain it the the the, the emotion of it all. So, definitely best day football wise in my lifetime. Definitely staggered into the DJ booth, and the first record I played was Yaz. The only way is up, and the second record I played was Gilbert O'Sullivan. Get down. And the third record I played was Yaz, The Only Way Is Up. And the fourth record I played was Status Quo, Down Down, Deeper and Down. <laughs> the fifth record I played was Yaz, a remix, The Only Way Is Up. And <laughs> who cared? We were just singing, dancing. Uh, it was just a fantastic night. Uh, and then I... I the rest of it was just a blur. It was just celebrations. I think my old mate at the time, Jono, 
and keep putting me in a taxi later on. Uh, and then of course next day everybody scampering to uh, get copies of The Green and because that fantastic headline uh, and I managed to get one and it's, it's in my Blades collections. Uh, but the everything about Leicester was magnificent, the fans, the atmosphere, the old fashioned ground of course because Filbert Street was a cracking little ground. Um, and that kit, the away shirt, for me the best Sheffield United shirt ever. I think we were, um, by the time we got to the final whistle, it was just a, uh, it's a bit, we, were, we knew we were there for, for so long. And we, got, we were a bit disappointed really, because I think first first thing were that we were that Leeds had won, so we weren't champions. But then we had that Wednesday had lost them, and they were, it, it just, it changed up and down really, but it was just to think that we'd gone back into first division as it were then. It were uh, Wednesday at uh, weren't going to be in first division. Wow, can't beat it. It was just fantastic, and it's there behind me uh, because that is the match worn shirt of Digger Barnes or David Barnes. He was nicknamed Digger because there was a character on Dallas called Digger, Digger Barnes. So it was a bit of an obvious choice, but uh, and obviously the fullback. And uh, my old pal, my old mucker, Martin Harrison, Baldy, he uh, very kindly gave me the shirt uh, for helping him and supporting him through his illness. And it remains one of my most treasured possessions. Uh, and uh, I love him dearly. And God bless you, Martin. But it's there, it's well looked after. And uh, those my little memories of Filbert Street. Mostly an alcoholic blur, but a fantastic party. Sheffield United had done it. They'd made the arduous journey back to the elite of English football, and for a generation of Blades fans, they can say, I was there. <laughs>